Good afternoon. Today we have assembled here at the Wicomico County Sheriff's Office to announce the arrest of a Parkside High School special education teacher on felony drug distribution charges. Seated to my immediate right, your left, is Superintendent of Wicomico County Public Schools, Dr. Donna Hanlon. Seated to my far right is Wicomico County Assistant State's Attorney and our special opioid heroin strategist, Mr. Richard Bruckner. And seated to my immediate left is Wicomico County Executive, Bob Culver. I'd like to thank each of you for being here today to cover what we collectively believe is the worst act of betrayal. A case in which a school teacher, a special education school teacher, assigned to Parkside High School engaged in drug dealing at Parkside High School. This case began several weeks ago when we received information from a recovering addict here in Wicomico County. A man who came forward who wanted to report his source of opioids during a very dark period in his life. This information led us to the defendant charge in this case. We received information that a Parkside High School teacher was selling large amounts of prescription pills and heroin while at the school. The information revealed that she was selling to a plethora of customers from both Wicomico and Worcester counties. We received no information that any of the drugs were being sold to other educators or any students at Parkside High School. We were also told the teacher's name was Monica Wendy Snee. 51 years of age of the 6100 block of Westbrook Drive here in Salisbury, Maryland. We immediately made this case a priority. After conducting just four weeks of investigation, surveillance, and other law enforcement investigative techniques, Wicomico County Sheriff's deputies from our School Resource Division, assisted largely by members of our Community Action Team, a team exclusively dedicated to the investigation of opioid and heroin-related crimes here in Wicomico County, they made their move. Armed with search warrants authorized and commanding deputies to search the defendant's 2016 Nissan Rogue, deputies intercepted Monica Snee's vehicle as she drove out of the parking lot of Parkside High School. Inside Snee's vehicle were 173 capsules of suspected heroin and approximately 340 oxycodone pills, several strips of Suboxone, and nearly $3,000 in United States currency. Monica Snee was arrested without incident. The press release you have before you is yours to keep and Lieutenant Tim Robinson has been directed to email each of you one as well. Monica Snee has been charged with the following offenses. Possession of heroin. Possession of heroin with intent to distribute. Possession of heroin with intent to distribute within 1,000 feet of a school zone. Possession of oxycodone. Possession of oxycodone with the intent to distribute. Possession of oxycodone with intent to distribute within 1,000 feet of a school zone. Possession of suboxone with the intent to distribute within 1,000 feet of a school zone. Monica Snee was taken to the District Court Commission office by Sheriff's Detectives last night where she was held without bond. However, she has been seen by a District Court judge this morning who has now set her bond at $50,000. We will now answer any questions you might have. So you said that... Um She's charged with selling within the thousand feet of a school zone. How do we know that she didn't sell to a student or something like that? We have no evidence at this time to suggest she did not sell to a student or any other educators, uh, but we are continuing our investigation this time. We have seized uh, several documents. We have seized electronic devices to further our investigation, and we are currently working to seize bank accounts as well. So if she sold within a thousand feet of the school zone, who do we know that she sold to in that area? We are gonna continue our investigation. We're gonna hopefully determine that information at a later date, but right now we have no evidence at all to suggest that she sold to any students or any school teachers. And again, how long has this been going on for? Approximately four weeks. And how far reaching is this? Was, this? was she working alone or is that information still unknown? Uh, that is unknown. We do not believe she was working alone, but we do not have any information to suggest that she was collaborating with anyone else within the school or employed by the school. Do you anticipate more arrests at this time? It's, it's likely. What is the possible sentencing for someone with these charges, especially including um, being charged of distributing and selling in a school zone? I would defer to my state's attorney to answer that question. Thank you. Um, the possession with the intent to distribute any narcotic in a school zone carries an additional 20 years of potential incarceration mm -hmm. uh, on top of the potential 20-year sentence for just a regular possession with intent to distribute. It's an additional element that it's within the school's property. 
Any other questions? Um, going forward, this might be for Dr. Hanlon. Mm -hmm. um, what do you say to your community, especially since it's been kind of a rough two weeks for you guys? Right. Well, if if if, if I can, I'll make a statement as well. Um, I want to begin by reiterating what we what we indicated in our statement that we put out last evening, and that is that we take very seriously the safety and security of our students. That's the most important thing. It's our top priority. Late yesterday afternoon, Sheriff Lewis called me to inform me of the arrest of Monica Snee, and at that point we began working cooperatively with the Sheriff's Office on this particular issue. And we also immediately placed this teacher on administrative leave pending the outcome of the investigation. Working in cooperation with the Sheriff's Office, we assisted Parkside High School Principal Kim Penny with crafting a communication first to her staff so that they would be aware of the situation and that did go out last evening as well as a phone message that went out to parents of students at Parkside again last evening to make sure that they were aware of the situation. And, and in that message, we reinforced to parents to please speak to your children about this matter and encourage them to, if they have information or if staff have information about this situation, to please immediately contact the Sheriff's Office. As, as Sheriff Lewis mentioned, they received this tip four weeks ago and have been investigating the activities of Ms. Snee since that time. We had no knowledge until yesterday when the arrest was made. The investigation is continuing and I just want to reiterate what the Sheriff has said that at this point we have no knowledge of any student who was involved in drug transactions nor any knowledge of dr drug transactions being made inside Parkside High School. I believe as Sheriff Lewis mentioned the alleged transactions took place outside of the school in a parking lot behind the school and near the bus ramp. Please let me assure you that the Wicomico County Public Schools and the Wicomico County Board of Education does not tolerate illegal drug use or drug possession and distribution of illegal drugs in school or on school property. While we have eyes and ears and cameras throughout our schools, we can't cover every area and that's why we instruct our students and our staff that if you see something suspicious, that you should say something immediately to a teacher or to an administrator. This heroin epidemic is a crisis in our country and as part of the Wicomico County Opioid Task Force, I take these matters very seriously. And as a partner in this community, our school system is involved in finding solutions to this very complex problem. We do consider it our responsibility, along with parents and guardians, to educate our students on the dangers and the long-term negative effects of the use of, illeg of illegal drugs. And again, we have zero tolerance for possession or distribution of illegal drugs by students or staff on our school property. I want to thank the Sheriff for his diligence in fighting this epidemic and want to reiterate that safety is our top priority and that the Sheriff has the complete cooperation of the Wicomico County Public Schools and also of the Board of Education in, its, in his efforts. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Go ahead. <laughs> Dr. Hamlin, yes, um, we were curious, how long has Monica Snee worked for Wacomico County Public Schools and do you have any comment on her performance in the school system? I'm not going to comment on her performance, but I can tell you that she's been employed since 2000. Okay. Um, it sounds, seems like an obvious question, but just from your perspective, sure. what is, why is it such a big deal that a, that a teacher, whether she's telling the students or not, <laughs> is selling these illegal drugs? Why, from your perspective, why is it such a big problem for your, for your schools? Oh, I think the sheriff started his first comments about it being a betrayal. Is I mean, we are in the business of educating students about the dangers, as I said, and the long-term effects of illegal drug use. And to know that our teacher was allegedly involved in illegal distribution anywhere near our schools is um, baffling and uh, again, a betrayal. This, um, I, I would like to add, it's very baffling to me as well. As Dr. Hanlon said, I, I've been in the industry 34 years now, and in 34 years, I, I, I have never known of a teacher here in Wicomico County being arrested for the distribution of drugs um, off school campus 
or on school campus. This is an, it is an act of betrayal to all of us who put our trust and our confidence in, in, in one another because we, we can't do this alone. We, we work every day as hard as we possibly can to, um, to gain the confidence of this community and what we do. Law enforcement is no differently. Uh, we all have individuals within our profession that go astray, and, and this was an absolute act of betrayal to myself, to Dr. Hamlin, and to thousands of other hardworking educators that give 150% every day here in Wicomico County. Um, my child is an educator here in this county, mm -hmm. and this hurts me for her. I, I, I didn't call her last night. I've not spoken to her this morning. She's just learning about this now like most people are. Uh, this is an act of betrayal to all of us, and we're all hurt by it. I can tell you that. Um, can you just confirm that this is Monica Sneak? That is her. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. And had, did you have, have you conducted a search warrant at her home? Did you find more drugs there? We did conduct a search warrant at her home. Uh, recovered uh, a few things, a bit of evidentiary value, but nothing of any significance. What was recovered of significance was recovered from her car uh, when we intercepted her leaving the school. Dr. Hanlon, I have a question for you. So obviously this case comes just two weeks after Caitlin Purnell took her life um, amid bullying accusations. Um, you know, WBOC has spoken to teachers at, at um, the school who say there are morale issues at the school. Um, is leadership being looked at? Is leadership? Should no. We? I, I can, uh, can tell you that Kim Penny, the principal and the administrative staff there have done an outstanding job of handling both of these very, very difficult situations. And I think that if you um, were present or happened to see the live streaming of our Board of Education meeting last night where the president of the student government spoke eloquently about the, um, the matter of the student's death, um, you would know that that school is in very good hands with students and staff. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any questions for our county executive? I'm just arm candy here, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I have a um, yes, ma'am. Do you have any plans now moving forward of any type of action within the community to hold any type of opioid heroin events moving forward? I know you recently did, um, but will this change anything? No. We, we were planning now to go throughout the county to a lot of the different firehouses to have community uh, uh, conversations. And we did start with the first one at the Wicomico Youth and Civic Center, and that went very well. And again, with Laurie Brewster and with Rich's office here, we're going to probably continue on that throughout the county. But uh, just to add a little bit to it, I mean, it's sad because it's one of our own. You know, it's a teacher that we've trusted so much, and, and, and that's what makes it sad. But we are going to continue from the county point of view to hit this as hard as we can. We're doing very well in trying to save lives. Our opioid intervention team has done very well, but it's not over with till it's over and we're gonna to continue to keep on going with this, uh, whoever's involved. You know, this is a classic example of what I've always said, that the Drug Distribution Network is an equal opportunity employer. Uh, those who wanna get involved in the transportation and distribution of narcotics and do so, that's a choice they make. None of us is immune from addiction. Not one of us in this room is immune. We all have a loved one, a friend, a relative, a neighbor who's been affected by, by opioid addiction. None of us is immune from that. But I, I will tell you, since we had our opioid, fo opioid forum here in Wicomico County at our Wicomico Youth and Civic Center just last month, we have received many emails and individuals who have called in to provide us with additional information. Uh, I was just forwarded another tip that came in yesterday. We, we've set up a separate tip line uh, just to intercept tips regarding heroin and opioid addiction. And it's, uh, it's so heartening to me to see people come forward. Let me make it perfectly clear. It was information provided by a concerned citizen, a recovering addict that led us directly to Monica Snee in this particular case. A man who said enough is enough. She has supplied me with my heroin. She has supplied me with my pills and enough is enough. And because he came to us, we prioritized this case because it was within our schools. We have always worked in a very close working relationship with our Wicomico County Board of Education, our educators, and working in the partnership and the collaborative effort with them, we have brought this case to a successful conclusion within four short weeks once we commence this investigation. And quite honestly, there are many drug investigations that take months to unravel what we finally learn. Do you think this will lead to people sending in more tips? To yes, ma'am, I do. Okay. 
and we're prepared to receive those tips from anyone who wants to share information. In fact, before this press conference went live, I was approached with an individual who said, I've got information on her, she's been dealing for a while, and we plan to interview that person today. Let me make it clear, she wasn't just dealing at Parkside. She wasn't just dealing from Parkside. She was dealing at a number of locations here in Wicomico County, locations that we have documented and specifically have documented as a direct result of sources who have called us and contacted us. So Parkside happened to be her place of employment, and she didn't become unemployed simply because she arrived at Parkside. She was a drug dealer 24 hours a day. Any other questions? Thank you all so much for being here. Thank you very much. You bet.